Well, glory to God, today is saturated with supernatural power Saturday because we are feeding the hungry here at Victory by the hundreds. They're coming in over and over again. The parking lot is filled. We have been preparing all week for them. And if you have any needs in your life for foods, we are here to give it to you and bless you and see you encouraged because this is God's time to give you the strength, both spiritually and physically, to go on and do the work of God. So we here at Victor Christian Fellowship are open from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and will meet the needs of every person that comes with food sources and tremendous blessing of frozen foods and cold foods and dry goods and oh, what a tremendous joy. Well, on this day, we're finishing up our series. We're talking about freedom from need domination through purpose motivation. And we've identified our, our key scripture, and that is, it's our, it's our text. It says, in whom you have obtained an inheritance that is predestinated according to the purpose of him who works everything after the counsel of his own will. Now, we know the purpose of him, 1 John 3, verse 8, is to destroy the works of the devil. For God was with Jesus, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, Acts 10, 38. We know that the purpose that we are here is to proclaim to the principalities and powers of the air the many-faceted wisdom of God. You might say, well, where do I find that scripture? Well, I'll just tell you. Well, I'll also show you. That's over here. It says in Ephesians chapter 3, it says, after you make, verse 9, all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. You bring them into that intimacy of Christ in them, the hope of glory. Then it says, to the intent. He's living in you with a purpose, with a single focus, that now under the principality and powers in heavenly places may be made known by the church the many-faceted wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. So what is our purpose to make known to the principalities and powers of the air the many-faceted wisdom of God in whom we have boldness and access by the faith of Access to where? Access from God to every operation working against you. You know that God has orchestrated your steps. So why do you think this day would be a something wrong Saturday when you are in a super saturated Saturday with a, the grace and the fire and the power of God? Oh, I just got to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you meet them where they live. God, you, you open their eyes to see that they are the purpose of God. You are orchestrating everything after your purpose. You have set them apart in this time. You've set us apart. You set their family apart. You set their mind apart, their will apart, their emotion apart. You set their heart apart. You set their lives single and apart to fulfill your destiny. Oh, my Father, I bless you. You are awesome, God. You are awesome, God. I pray your supernatural grace and faith and favor rules that you, God, who have called us by your name, God, we stand in this time. We acknowledge your awesome presence. And Father, we bow our hearts to you who orchestrate everything after the counsel of your own will. Now, I want you to picture right now, you are not just going through a pandemic. You are purposed in a pandemic to give the principalities and powers of the air 
the wisdom of God that God has ordained you to walk step by step, one after another is a miracle to fulfill God's destiny. You'll find in your walk that there is a place of peace that just is shocking to you. You'll also find this scripture becomes very critical. We know that all things, you know this scripture, Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Well, of course you're called according to his purpose because the, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested and we are in him with the eternal purpose through him to pronounce in the principalities and powers of the air the many faceted wisdom of God. You don't have me, I have you and you are under my feet. You are in no authority over my life. God, you said no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. I see right now healing coming to the ear right behind the jawbone that there's been a sharp pain. I speak that pain. Loose your hold right now in Jesus' name. I also see someone else that they have on the back of their tongue a tremendous inflammation that's been going on in their throat. I command you, desist in Jesus' name. Father, you've given us power over cancer. I speak to cancer. You die in the name of Jesus. You have no right to their body. I command this coronavirus influence that's created fear and havoc and so many symptoms trying to bring in destruction against their lungs. I command you aborted and I demand you to loose your hold in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. We pronounce to the principalities of the air. They have no right, no power, no authority, no influence. They have no name that is above the name Jesus. God, I thank you for Jesus' name. And you work everything out. So what happens? All of a sudden, things change. Things dry up. Do you worry? No. Do you make plans? Oh, sure. You, you take many plans. Many are the plans of man's heart. But the counsel of the Lord, that's what stands. You can devise all types of things. You can work, and, and we're all responsible for our lives to be responsible to fulfill our distance from each other, our carry out our financial obligations correctly. But also, we need to understand that we've got a God who's called us, and the God who called us knows us intimately, personally, and is meeting us not according to our need, but according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, this is how this works. Now, listen carefully. Elijah was being fed during the, the drought where everybody's dying, cattle are dying, crops have already died. There is no, no life anywhere. He's being fed by a brook and ravens are bringing him food, which was said from the king's table. Now, so he's, he's comfortable, he's being met by God, but the brook dries up, the ravens stop coming, and the voice of God speaks, I have commanded a widow, get up, go to city Sychar, I have commanded a widow, the woman there, to sustain you. Well, he starts on his way walking, and he goes to the entry of the city, and all the businesses are closed, like today. He goes to the entrance of the city, there's nobody around, like today, F crops are gone, grocery stores are empty, and there's a widow woman. And he says, fetch me a little water. So she knew where water was, and during a drought, water is the most precious thing, but she knew where it was. He says, oh, when you're going, bring me a little cake. Bring me a morsel of bread, just take care of me. And she says, as truly as I live, I don't have but a little handful of meal, a little cruise of oil, and I'm going to make for me and my son, we have already resigned. This is our last meal. 
There's no food anywhere in existence. We have come to our end, and we're going to die. He says, well, go and do what you say. But make for me first a little cake, then for you and your son. So she went and did, and he says, for thus saith the Lord, because she obeyed that voice of God. He says, thus saith the Lord, the barrel of meal, now she only had a little little handful of meal, but now it's a barrel of meal, and the cruise of oil shall not fail till the Lord sends rain upon the earth, for you and your house will eat. Now she and her house did eat, and Elijah, until the Lord sent rain. Why? Because the purpose was being fulfilled. The need was very, very evident. But when you connect to the purpose of God, and that's why I'm asking you to make for God first your offering, your tithes, your first fruits. Make for God first. There's a donate button. We are here with freedom from need domination through purpose motivation. And one of the greatest freedoms is in the realm of giving, worshiping God in your giving. So give Jesus experience the most awesome offering in tithes, first fruits. Maybe it's a sacrifice, but today is Saturday. We're giving out literally tens of thousands of pounds of food today, giving it out. We have no debt. We have a God who has abundance. You need to experience this God of abundance. So give unto him, touch him. If you have need in your life, come receive. We have plenty of food. You're going to receive a check from the government. Honor God with it. It may be the first time you ever go over the threshold of tithing and giving to God. You may have gone cold in your commitment and your vision. But here in the middle of this chaos and mayhem that we're around, you are now able to receive freely. And now you can give freely because God gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So make sure you sow your seed today. And don't forget Sunday. Sunday morning, you can come here to Victory at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 12 p.m., You say, it's illegal for you to be open. No, it's not. We are an essential ministry. We are, by the state of Delaware, essential. And we're open. And we house 10 people at a time in each one of the areas with outside doors. They have access in and out. And every area is 1,000 square feet or 10,000 square feet for 10 people. So there is more than enough room to have 20 to 100 people in the building and have nobody closer than 10, 20 feet apart. And so you get the privilege of being blessed and we get the privilege of seeing your face. And by the way, if you're going to stay at home, we want you to send your picture and we put them on the seat so we can pray for you every service and you send them to media at G www.m.com. That is media, M-E-D-I-A, at G-W-W-M, G, like Gary, www.m.com. And that media at G-W-W-M.com will print your picture, put it on the chairs, will pray for you throughout the Sunday services. And if you're going to stay at home, make sure that you tune in to our services. They are life-changing. I want to thank you for giving. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank God just because of his loving kindness and tender mercy that follow you all the days of your life. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless.